Hello fellow brawlers, welcome to Brawl Theory. The show where brawl nerds like myself dive into the lore behind Brawl Stars and today we have a lot of questions to answer. What exactly happened to Nita's and Leon's parents? Why did Colt forget who he is? Or who he was? Or who he will be. What actually happened at Star Park? And most importantly, why are more than half of the people watching my channel not subscribed? But even more important than that, what is Supercell's evil plan? Because it's obvious they are up to something. In my most recent Brawl Theory video, I clarified a timeline of some important events that have happened behind the scenes of Brawl Stars and explained what the purpose of the investor video actually was. I also uncovered that someone at Supercell has a very evil plan, but there's actually a group of employees who are trying to stop that plan. And their name is Spewed, the Star Park Union of Distressed Employees. And if you don't know what I'm talking about or you're confused at all, I highly recommend watching my last Brawl Theory video because it lays the foundation of everything I'm going to cover and be talking about in this video. And you are going to want to understand everything because Supercell has a plan that is so evil, so wicked, and so crazy that I had to consult with my funeral director before recording this video. Let's start with the first part of Supercell's plan, which is to create super powerful beings called brawlers, ideally without getting unwanted attention from the public. The way they decided to do this was to create a theme park called Star Park, which was actually just a front to hide their real plans. They created weaponized robotics that they claimed were just animatronics made to entertain. Here's a bartender bot named Barley, who is clearly making drinks that are too strong for consumption. This robotic bear that we know as Nita's Bear Bruce is less fit to make people People laugh than he is to cause them harm. And near the end of the investor video, you'll actually see a giant robot that is very similar to the boss in Boss Fight. Park guests' minds are going to be blown away by what it can do, but its performance will be the last that they'll ever see. I should mention that they're not only trying to create deadly robots, but they're also experimenting with giving them artificial intelligence. In this clip, we see a man working on an arcade cabinet called Project Laser. If you pause the clip at the right moment, you'll actually see the face of 8-Bit appear on the screen, which proves my theory that this arcade cabinet is actually 8-Bit. You see, 8-Bit used to be a normal arcade cabinet, but he transformed into a living, breathing machine with his own intelligence and personality. All of this was due to him breaking free from his programming after being exposed to high levels of radiation. And if you're wanting more details on 8-Bit's origin story and how we learned that, I actually covered it all in this Brawl Theory video. But if you thought that creating deadly robots with artificial intelligence was bad enough, what I find disturbing is that Star Park was also involved Involved with kidnapping. In this clip of the investor video, you see a sweet family riding the baggage blaster. And if you pay close attention, you'll actually hear the following announcement. Nice trip. Please keep all family members in the vehicle. But a few seconds later, their cart makes it back to the entrance, and it's obvious that not all family members remained in the vehicle because the parents were missing. The little girl's handed a teddy bear, and the boy is given a sucker. And as he pulls his hood on, you may realize that this is, in fact, Nita and Leon, who I confirmed were brother and sister in my Brawl Theory video on relationships in Brawl Stars. What happened to Nita's and Leon's parents? What would Star Park want to do with either the parents or the kidnapped children? It all has to do with human DNA experimentation. Star Park wanted to create superhuman brawlers for their evil plans. And now I have proof. You see, there are actually a lot of other references in the investor video to various brawlers in Brawl Stars. Here is Shelly and Colt. I believe that this is Pam. I think that this is actually Jesse. And this woman floating on the magic carpet is likely Tara. Here's Jackie mining away on her jackhammer. And here is Gail tending to the flowers. All of these brawlers are working for Star Park, but just because they work for Star Park, doesn't mean that they're safe from being experimented on. And if you take a look at their employee manual, which we found on the starpark.biz website, it literally says, it's not a biohazard. It's a bio opportunity. As further evidence, the monologuer on the WKBRL stream said this. I'm hearing strong language that redheads are sick. I've been alive a long time. And I've never seen anything as crazy as this. And an advertisement in the WKBRL stream was made specifically for people who are sick and who also work in scrapyards, namely Jesse and Pam. Do you work in a scrapyard? Are you sick? <laughs> and the purpose of another advertisement was to try and hire dancers with very unique qualifications. Many, many healthy dancers with strong immune systems, few family connections, will get a job in the dance show. And if you happen to play the dancer clip backwards in the investor video, they were literally asking for us to help them. Help us, help us, help us. 
This is the whole reason why the employees came together to form the Spewed Union. And we know that at least some of the brawlers are part of Spewed because of Gale. If you look closely at this clip, you'll actually notice that he has a Spewed sticker on his snowblower. In fact, many people have suspected that Gale is actually the one who left the 25 minute monologue on the WKBRL stream. And that's a very plausible theory, especially because we know that he was a member of Spewed and his voice obviously sounds a lot like the monologuer. If that's the case, Gale's whole job was to try and warn the public that they were literally being transformed into brawlers. And the proof of this is this employee right here. Right after she finishes her line and blinks danger in Morse code, a close-up will reveal that her teeth sharpen and become pointy. Which brawler does this remind you of? Colette, a crazed fan of Star Park who happens to work in the gift shop. And here we can see the physical effects of her being transformed into a superhuman brawler right in the middle of the investor video being filmed. But robots and humans aren't the only ones being transformed into brawlers. If you listen to the WKBRL monologue, he specifically mentions Crow. I had, a, I had a Crow friend. He used to bring me shiny objects in exchange for food. We're not friends no more. Clearly this bird Crow was transformed into Crow the Brawler as we know him in Brawl Stars. And in this clip, we see that they managed to create a giant bee strong enough to break free from a metal chain and kill a few people, then drag them off probably to their bee queen. It's obvious that they've also experimented on plants to create Sprout and Spike, and they've even figured out some way to bring the dead to life for Frank, Mortis, Ems, and possibly even Poco. Unless he's just made out of paper mache. Evil paper mache. <laughs> Clearly, Star Park is responsible for creating super strong brawlers with some sort of evil purpose in mind. But here's the deal with creating super strong brawlers. They're only beneficial if you can control them. And that's where the Star Park hats come into play. In a previous Brawl Theory video, Gamba and I theorized that the brawlers were being controlled with the Star Crown hats. By the way, a huge thank you to Gamba for helping me complete the theories in this video. Later, the monologuer in the WKBRL stream confirmed that people are being controlled by the crowns. The crowns ain't right, they ain't natural. Well, I'll just put it on my head. Don't do it. Think about it. They're coming. They're coming for our heads. That's right, people. Don't put these hats on because that is one way that they can control you. But honestly, if you're just in the park, I think it's already too late. I believe that this building inside of Star Park is also responsible for controlling the minds and thoughts of those inside the park. This building was referenced in the 8-bit minigame right before 8-bit underwent extreme radiation. And there are some blueprints of it on the starpark.biz website. The image is rather pixelated, but you can see that a bunch of strange radio waves or some sort of waves are being emitted from the top of the dome. Whether or not this specific building is part of the mind control, it's obvious that the brawlers don't have complete control of themselves. And I'm fairly certain that we happen to be controlling them whenever we play Brawl Stars on our phones. In Gale's monologue on the WKBRL stream, he says this. I am inside a simulation. And this. This is a game. I'm telling you right now, it's all a game. Not to mention this. A lot of us get to a point where I'm really sure that I don't think I even can control my arms and limbs. But then he also says something interesting right here. Who is controlling my character? Is it me? Or is there a second player out there? Player two has entered the game. Wow! Who is player number two? You and I are. The players of Brawl Stars. To further confirm this, the host of the investor video left us a hidden message that is revealed when you actually play it backwards. In the future, the children control us. This proves that when we are playing Brawl Stars, we are literally controlling the brawlers. Not just in game, but somehow in their real lives. Now that brings up a lot of questions that I'm gonna do my best to try and answer in this video. First up, we need to talk about time. And for once, I'm not talking about Kairos time, although it is time that you use Code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. I'm talking about the timeline behind this whole plot, because things are not lining up unless you know the truth behind what's really going on. In my last Brawl Theory video, I revealed that the filming for the investor video happened at the same time that the 25 minute monologue was airing on the WKBRL stream. The first bit of proof is that this alarm and this alarm are actually the same alarms. There are some small differences, but there are key parts of them that are the same. The second bit of proof is that the this is normal. on the investor video is the same as the this is normal. 
on the WKBRL stream that's on repeat right now as I'm recording this video. This double confirms that what we saw on the WKBRL stream happened way back in the past when the investor video was being filmed. That is very clear. However, it's also happening now, as in the present. You see, after the Max Energy drink first appeared on the WKBRL stream, several audio clips were played that were targeted warnings to various members of the community, specifically community members who were trying to uncover the truth behind Star Park. Just one example was Ray, who got a cease and desist order from Star Park Corporation. This happened before the alarm started going off and was in response to Ray speculating about all this on his YouTube channel. This means that the WKBRL stream must be happening in the present. Otherwise, Otherwise, it could not be reacting to what we are doing right now. But it's also happening in the past. Well, sort of. The WKBRL stream is playing right now in the present, but it is being controlled by Spewed and is being broadcasted by them from the past. You see, the only way that this makes any sense at all is if they were somehow able to see into the future. And all of a sudden, it makes a lot of sense that when the investor video said that the children control them in the future, it wasn't just him speculating, he knew it for a fact, because he had already seen the future. Okay, now I'm just gonna stop you right here. I know that this sounds totally crazy, but it starts to get a lot less crazy in actually sounds plausible the more you look into their obsession with stars. On the starpark.biz website, there is a scientific artwork with some blueprints for some sort of rocket ship, and the description of it says, this is bad news for customers. And in this clip of the investor video, we can see a model of that rocket. Additionally, SP Corporation ended Ray's cease and desist order by saying, Have a day, as bright as a star beam. The game that we all play and love is called Brawl Stars. And the name of the theme park that it takes place in is called Star Park. But what is the actual name of the company that created all of this? This is their logo, and they are called Cho Kyose Star Corporation. Now, Cho Kyose translates into super giant star, which is referring to the most massive stars in the universe that are called supergiant stars. Guess what happens when a supergiant star happens to die? According to Wikipedia, it almost always results in the formation of a black hole. What is at the center of a black hole? A place where the curvature of space and time becomes infinite. A place where the laws of physics no longer apply. A place where time bends differently than how you and I understand it. A place where, if you could control it, you could look into the future. Now, what's important is what the name of that place is, what the name of the center for black hole is called, a gravitational singularity. Now listen to this clip from the WKBRL monologue. Singularity? Huh? Singularity? Is there an echo in here? No, I said it twice because that's how important it is. I believe that the mission of Star Park, also known as Supercell, also known as Cho Kyose Star Corporation, was to mess with black holes somehow so that they could interact with and look into the future. And this promotional ad played on the WKBRL live stream by Cho Kyose Corporation proves it. Because at Cho Kyose Star Corporation, it's our belief that all our chemistry, all our computations, all our innovations, once you divide it by X and carry the one, they add up to the future. That's not a guarantee. It's a promise and a warning. It is a promise and a warning that their chemistry, their computations, all their innovations all add up to the future because they are messing with time, but messing with time has consequences. And I think that when Star Park was messing with time, they somehow trapped themselves inside of some sort of interdimensional time loop or alternate reality or something crazy like that. Listen to this clip from the WKBRL monologue. You made a huge mistake, my friend. You're trapped now, forever. Interdimensional theme parks. Do they exist? Obviously. Are they expensive? You bet your butt! And that is why I think that the brawlers in Brawl Stars are trapped in an interdimensional theme park and much their own demise. They're trapped there forever. The four-hour photo express poster on the starpark.biz website was described as remember every moment forever. The grand opening ticket of the park described it as being certain to provide people a never-ending frenzy of cheerfulness. The description of the website says you will not want to leave this webpage ever. The Star Park theme song lyrics go like this. A place you'll never 
want to leave. I don't think it's a matter of wanting to leave. I think it's a matter of them not being able to leave ever. Because the Star Park executives are keeping them trapped in their interdimensional theme park so that they can continue transforming people into brawlers and control them as they please. What happens if one of them wants to share a message to the public? They're quickly replaced and brainwashed just like the first host of the investor video and whoever was in this penguin suit. In fact, there's a lot of evidence suggesting that the brawlers have had their minds wiped before. In this animation introducing Star Park, Colt is watching himself on the screen and then he asks himself an important question. Is that who I am? He says this almost as if he no longer remembers who he is and he's trying to figure it out. He was looking for similar answers in this animation when he asked Shelly, What's going on here? And she said, No time to explain! When people discovered the 8-bit minigame within Brawl Stars, we realized that two important files were missing from his system. Who.exe and what is 8-bit.exe. We also learned from these files that it really bothered 8-bit. Clearly somebody was tampering with 8-bit's files. It's also pretty obvious that Gale had his memory messed with, assuming that it, of course, he's the one that actually did the 25-minute monologue in the WKBRL stream. I've been able to gather some useful information from him by looking at the whole picture, but it is pretty clear that his mind has been messed with more than what is healthy. Well, here's what I do. No, for facts. You change one letter in gems, and you get germs. It's all coming together, just like spinning at the top of the wheel. Here's what they don't want you to know. They have weaponized spaghetti. We're talking military grade pasta. It's obvious that the brawlers need our help. I mean, they specifically asked for our help in this clip. They are trapped in some sort of alternate dimension that interacts with ours through a mobile game called Brawl Stars. I don't know exactly what happened to them or how we can help them, but I believe that they're going to give us more information on October 10th. If you look at this penguin plush toy on starpark.biz, you'll see a sign that says bird not clean. And in the lower right hand corner of that note, it says 10-10 or October 10th. Also, if you go to the WKBRL stream at the time that I'm recording this, all you'll hear is, this is normal. But if you watch the needle on this machine, you'll notice that it repeats a pattern over and over again. It goes from zero to 10, then it goes back down to zero to reset and returns to 10. It goes back to zero to reset again and then ends on 20. This same message is repeated over and over again. And if we remove the zeros, we get 10, 10, 20, which is an abbreviation for October 10th, 2020. I don't know what they're going to reveal or how they're going to do it, but I think that we need to be ready to help them however we can, because I think that they are coming for our world next. And as you can see right here, they're already doing a great job. But hey, that's just a theory, a brawl theory. Thanks for watching. K-A-I-R-O-S, Cookhouse in the Brawl Star Shop.